Welcome to the next installment in our Making You the Scientist video series. Today we're going to do an experiment that involves two very important physics topics. The first is freezing point depression, and the second is phase changes. And the most interesting thing about this experiment is what we're going to do is we're going to freeze water without using a freezer. Now to do this experiment, you need some simple things that you might have around the house. We have a thermometer. You can also use a digital thermometer, just plain old salt, ice, crushed ice, a test tube, a stopwatch, a water, and you can see I have an assortment of beakers here. If you don't have beakers available, of course, you can just use plain old glasses. All right, if you would like more information about this experiment, you can find that available at my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I have a full write-up. The link is in the description below. Okay, as I pointed out in our introduction, we're going to start the first part of the experiment with looking at freezing point depression. And to do that, we have here a beaker that is full of crushed ice. And to that beaker, we're going to add some water. We want to add just enough water to wet the ice. We really want to have a slurry of ice water, mostly ice with some water. And then we're going to stir that up nicely, quick stir. And then we're going to place the thermometer in there to figure, see the temperature of that ice water mixture. You can see when we start, we have room temperature here is 20 degrees Celsius. And then we can place that thermometer into our mixture of ice and water. Just let it sit for a moment. It should come pretty quickly to zero degrees Celsius. Okay, now you can see that the temperature of our ice water mixture is at zero degrees Celsius. Now, for freezing point depression, what we want to try and do is we want to try and get the temperature of that ice water mixture to go below zero degrees Celsius. And to do that, we're going to add some salt to our mixture. So we're going to add like five teaspoons of salt. It doesn't matter exactly how much salt. One more. And then you're going to give it a nice good stir. Mix that all up really nicely. There you go. Nice stirring. And then we're going to put our thermometer back in. And we should see pretty quickly that the temperature goes below zero degrees Celsius. We'll let it sit like that for a moment. Okay, let's do a quick temperature check. Okay, you can see already we're at minus uh, three degrees. Let's put it thermometer back in there again. And we can give it a little bit of a stir. Of course, you're not supposed to be using your thermometer to stir. Move the thermometer in there like that. And then we'll check the thermometer temperature one more time. And you can see now we're getting pretty close to minus five degrees. We'll leave it in there one more time. Give it a little bit of a stir. Okay, now we can check the final temperature of our water, ice, and salt mixture. And you can see that that temperature has come down very nicely to just about minus 10 degrees. I think we're at minus nine degrees. So we started with the water and the ice at zero degrees Celsius. We added the salt. We depressed the freezing point to minus nine degrees. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that mixture of water, ice, and salt to freeze some pure water. So here we have a test tube. In the test tube, we have about 10 milliliters of pure water. We're gonna place our thermometer in there and figure out what our, measure what our initial temperature is. We want to write the temperature down. We have an initial temperature of 25 degrees. We're going to place the test tube with the thermometer in our water ice salt bath, which has a temperature less than zero degrees. And then we're going to take our stopwatch, we're going to start our stopwatch, and we want to measure first the amount of time it takes for the water in our test tube to come to zero degrees. Celsius. Okay, we're coming up to one minute. Let's see, we have 50, 55, and then we'll just call that one minute. And you can see already that the temperature of the water in the test tube has come down to just about zero degrees. We're at two degrees Celsius, and it's dropping below two degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the thermometer and the test tube back in the ice water mixture, and we're going to mix that up a little bit, give it a good stir, and every minute or so, we'll give that a stir like that, and we'll see how long it takes now for the water in that test tube to freeze solid. Okay, now we're gonna check the temperature of the water in our test tube. You can see we just have about four minutes time that's been sitting in our bath of water, ice, and salt. So let's see the temperature. Oops, look at that. The temperature, we can't even read the temperature. Why well, can't we read the temperature? Because that water is completely frozen. In just four minutes, we use freezing point depression of our mixture to freeze that water. And you can see it's solid, frozen, frozen solid right there in our test tube. 
Okay, now let's see what happens when we take our test tube with our frozen water and put it in a warm water bath. Perhaps we can get the thermometer out of there and separate the thermometer, the water, and the test tube. All right, let's see, let it sit. And there you can see, we lift that up. Whoop, and there goes, the test tube slides off there very nicely. And there you have our thermometer with our frozen water. Doesn't that look cool? Now I'd like to talk about some of the physical principles behind freezing point depression and also this applies to boiling point elevation. Freezing point depression and boiling point elevation are colligative properties. Colligative properties are physical changes that occur when a solute is added to a solvent. In our experiment, the solute was the salt, the sodium chloride, and we added that to water, which was our solvent. You should remember that colligative properties do not depend on the type of solute that is added. So we could have used any solute. We use sodium chloride. You could use another salt such as calcium chloride or magnesium chloride. You could use a gas such as oxygen, or you could use another liquid such as ethylene glycol. All of those can be used to depress the freezing point. What is important is how many particles of the solvent that you add. The more salt we add, the more we can lower the freezing point. So remember, it's not the type of solute that's important, but it's how much of the solute we add to the solvent. Now, here is a model that I'm going to show you to try to demonstrate how freezing point depression works. Here we have a model of liquid water. Water, the chemical formula, is H2O, and these are all our water molecules. And this is water at 25 degrees Celsius, so we would have this in the liquid phase. You can see the water molecules are randomly oriented, and they're not that close together. In order to freeze this water, this pure water, we would have to lower the temperature to zero degrees Celsius. As we lower the temperature, the water molecules begin to move more slowly, and they start to set up a crystal structure, and then at zero degrees Celsius, they become a solid, and the solid water has this crystal structure that looks approximately like that. So that would be solid water at zero degrees Celsius. Now, what we want to do is we want to depress the freezing point below zero degrees Celsius. In order to do that, we added salt to our water, sodium chloride. When you add salt to water, you form sodium and chlorine ions. And what happens is those sodium and chlorine ions, they simply get in the way. They physically block the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms from forming hydrogen bonds that allow it to become a solid. In order to become a solid, you would have to lower the temperature below zero degrees Celsius. So this could be water that could be below zero degrees Celsius. It's still a liquid, and you could actually decrease the temperature of water to minus 20 degrees Celsius before freezing by adding enough sodium chloride. There are some very important applications for freezing point depression. One of those is in the winter time, we apply salt to roads to keep ice from forming. In the winter, when it's wet and the temperature goes below zero degrees Celsius, then ice will form on the roads and it will be hazardous for driving. Well, if we add salt to the roads, we can depress the freezing point of the water and the ice will not form as easily. Another application is when you put antifreeze in your car's radiator. The antifreeze, which will mix with the water, will keep the water in your car's engine from freezing when the temperature gets too low and from overheating and boiling when the temperature gets too high. And of course, there's another very important application for freezing point depression. And that's for making chocolate ice cream. That tastes pretty good. Delicious. Well, thank you so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed that, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Leave us a comment in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.